This is the Kawasaki Vulcan S, more importantly this is my Kawasaki Vulcan S. 650cc engine, any other details you can find that all online. This one's called Jelly Bean, as I'm sure many others are. Main reason for that. Jelly Bean was an old nickname of mine, and when I had to look on Google for a lightweight cruiser, I found a channel called Killer Cam. And Killer Cam was riding his dad's green Kawasaki Vulcan S, and he said the dank fuel tank looked like a damn jelly bean. Thus the name. So I put two and two together. Jelly Bean was named. There's a Kawasaki Vulcan S group on Facebook, Kawasaki Vulcan S Riders, KVSR. Always good people there, and they can give you the advice of any mechanical or any small bits, upgrades that you want. Three, two, one, rev it! Gives you all kinds of tingles in the right areas. So, let's do it. Now, you can find the link to my one year review of the Kawasaki Vulcan S up there. But if you want to know everything that is about the two years, well, here it is. And I'll say the same thing now as I did back then. I'm not here to give a review because I can't do the bike justification on that. I'm not a professional rider, I'm not a reviewer, but I can give you my suggestions, my opinions and my impressions. So once again I'll start off with upgrade the headlight, Cockney Biker has got a lovely, the Cockney Biker has got a lovely video on how to change that. Just, just search for Vulcan S on the old YouTubes and you'll find, you'll find a few regular uploaders, myself included. And you'll find a bunch of people who can show you upgrades, bits and bobs which they've done with theirs, it's all lovely. The bike itself is stunning, that's all I can say. I like to take pictures from this kind of angle, because it gives you a really sort of mean impression. If you want it to look mean, it can look mean. If you want it to look cute and cuddly, well I'm sure there's a someone in your area who can spray it nice and pink for you but everything else someone I know has a very pink fluffy seat that looks adorable it's all good so you can make this bike look masculine or you can make it look feminine it's entirely down to the user and the best thing is this bike is great for newer riders This is my first bike that I've purchased coming off a 125. First step into the big league, let's say, Kawasaki Vulcan S 650cc. Oh, it's a monster. If you want this thing to go, it will bloody go. It will run, it will crawl, it will do whatever you want. The only thing I will say is the throttle, little bit, like I'm barely moving it. There's almost no movement in there. And it's kind of, it's not kangarooing me back and forwards, but it is very fidgety. You can sort that out of a power commander, so I'm told. Clutch, good. Brakes, quite good. Acceleration on this thing, oh. It's a motorcycle, of course it's going to shift. But this, oh. You take that lovely engine from the Ninja and the Versus series, and you chuck that onto a lightweight frame, that's in a comfort cruiser sort of style, oh, filthy, absolutely filthy. 
and my last impressions video the one year impressions video I did say around this point that I would change the seat and I had changed the seat but it didn't work out quite well it was lovely just not quite up to the standard which I want Kawasaki does a comfort seat of their own which is a ludicrous price however if comfort is that important to you I'd probably suggest trying it out if possible if you can get a test ride on one but other than that it might be worth the investment alternatively you can probably find a individual in your area who also does upholstery and they can sort you out a nice new comfy seat I would say avoid gel pads because gel over time will if corrode isn't the right word it will wear out and it will get all smushy and it's just it's not a nice feeling especially on a hot day so avoid those if you can get yourself a proper comfort foam seat now that acceleration I talked about uh, how about that let's see what's around this corner And speaking of corners, this will handle them like an absolute monster. I know the next one coming up is a nice sweeping left bend and that comes downhill into a right hand turn. And you know, I'm just podding along at the moment, I'm not in a hurry. I'm not going to start ramming this 90 miles an hour up down the country roads because that's just not who I am. But you can lean this so easily, just a flick couple of fingers on the handlebars any good bike that allows you to do that is probably worth investing in unless you are a massive fan of the big over encumbersome bike which you know that's entirely up to you that's all fine good on you but the acceleration itself we've got a bit of space between us and the guys behind us so I'm just gonna bring this down and drop jelly bean here down to second let's pop that 20 mile an hour mark there we are now apparently this will do 0 to 60 in about 4 4.7 4.2 seconds somewhere around there between 4 and 5 seconds it's quite quick isn't it give you an idea of how this arrow sounds when you push the old uh, engine a little bit oh hmm more tingles in all the right places. I love it. I used to have a windshield on this, but I found it just, I can't get along with windshields, it's just something about me, I just get a lot of vibrations, but you can slap one on, it's very easy to do, PUIG do one, Kawasaki do their own one, it's part of the touring kit, got saddlebags which you can throw on the sides, which are quite spacious as well, so if you want to do touring, new seat, tour remote, maybe get that Kawasaki comfort seat, hope that comes with it, if you're just like me, you like to pot around a little bit, throw it up and down a few country roads at a decent pace. The performance version might do you quite well, or should do you quite well actually. Oh. For everything else, if you've got the stock pipe, you can drill a couple of holes into that. There's a guide to that on the Kawasaki Vulcan S group on Facebook. Hidden in there somewhere, you can also ask people for advice if you're not keen on drilling holes in your exhaust or if you're not keen on spending stupid amounts of money for a, an exhaust pipe yeah the arrow is quite pricey but if it comes with a bike ah, I'd say it's worth it now I've only had two major issues with this bike and they as far as reliability goes it's never been anything major it's been electrical and that's just my personal experience that's not saying anything bad about Kawasaki or the Vulcan S in general 
So, the first one was my ignition switch stopped working, that was fun. The second, where my right foot is here, there's a little fuse box just tucked into there. So all the water that gets kicked up by the front tyre is going to eventually find itself into that sort of general area. Now it is sealed off, uh, the actual fuse is sealed off, but you know, as, as time goes on, moisture gets into places and starts playing around with things it shouldn't do. And unfortunately, one of the fuses went, so I couldn't start the bike. That affected the main console there, so nothing would work. Oh, it was a lovely time. But an easy fix. So, yeah, never had anything bad. Just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and that's it. Reliability, as far as I'm concerned, well, it's been pretty great. Pretty great. Mileage, fuel consumption, all that kind of stuff, the eco stuff that people like to plod along about. From what I've been told and from what I've seen and from what I've paid out for as well, fuel consumption on this bike is very good. And I mean that as in it will take you miles as opposed to drink all the fuel and then leave your wallet with a very nice uh, money shaped hole. So all in all this bike is an absolute joy to ride. It's loud if you want to put a nice pipe on it. It's quiet with a stock exhaust. Fuel economy is very good. Insurance and that sort of stuff. I don't know, I don't live where you do, but this was uh, fairly decent for my area. I won't give you specific numbers, but it was all right. And again, it depends on your insurance and what you're actually after through them as well. I was really hoping a plane would take off here, but unfortunately not. Oh well, another day perhaps. Handling very good, the bike's lightweight. Now I have actually come off this bike once and that was entirely my own fault. I was going up a hill which didn't seem like much of a hill because when you're continuously climbing, you don't notice. And then I got to the top of this thing, didn't realize that the entire thing sloped to one side. I didn't counteract for that when I came up to this junction and then the uh, the front tire just decided, you know what, I've got my own of my own. I'm just going to pop myself right into that little pile of mud to the left of you there. And then the entire thing went over because I couldn't hold the bike up. It's a very awkward position, very awkward falling off it. But you know what, you live and learn, you laugh it off and then you carry on, don't you? That's how we do. No damage to the bike, no damage to me, apart from a bit of pride, but you know, it's... What I will say is getting this bike up off the floor, very easy. Oh. 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 Man down. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> if you are taller, thankfully the Kawasaki Vulcan S has the ergo fit system so you can have the pegs move forwards, you can have the seat push you forwards, you can have the seat bring you back. So if you're taller, if you've got longer legs, if you've got shorter arms, whatever your case, the ergo fit design can sort you out. Long legs, short arms. Short arms? No. Nah. Long arms, short legs? I don't know. People come in all shapes and sizes. I should probably say at this point, I'm not in any way paid to sell you this bike. It's just a really good bike. If you are new to motorcycling, especially if you've just done your direct access course or if you've uh, got, a, got an itch for a nice cruiser, I'd recommend the Vulcan S. I've kept up with a Harley Davidson on this, which I know to some people might not sound like a lot, to others it might sound like a the best thing in the world or offensive depending on which side you take but that guy could not outrun me felt great felt great off a set of lights or if you are like me you live in a town with a lot of roundabouts just so many roundabouts oh you know, that acceleration that off the mark burst of speed from this thing will just sort you out nice and quickly so if you are fortunate to live in the UK or I believe a certain few states in America, if not the odd one, 
If you're allowed to filter between traffic, of course, like I always say, do it safely, do it cautiously. But if you are actually able to do that, you can tuck yourself in between the traffic. And then as soon as that light goes green, you're gone. That's it. So if you are a city rider, if you are like this country rider, you want to just throw it up and down, you want to take it on longer sh sh um, you want to take it on longer journeys, you can do that. You absolutely can do that on this bike. Maybe a change of seat, a bit of extra equipment, job done. I've seen some people do some horrifically amazing things with this bike. Some of them put ape hangers on this thing, not sure if that's alright, but <laughs> each to their own and saying that as well I can end this impressions video there so I hope you've enjoyed this two years on and I'm still thoroughly enjoying this bike I would like a bit more power a 1000 cc engine in one of these would be oh so lovely but that involves you know redoing the frame that sort of stuff but for what it is a 650 cc bike it's very very good very impressionable so if you can take these for a test ride, don't buy one outright like I did because I was silly, but thankfully for me that worked out brilliantly. Now if you like what you've seen, if you enjoy the camera angles and that sort of stuff, throw a comment down below. And of course, you are a human being, you can decide for yourself whether you want to like, dislike or subscribe to this channel. That's all well and good, that's entirely up to you. So, have yourself a good one. Enjoy, and if you are currently in the process of getting a Vulcan S let me know if you've got a Vulcan S let me know if you don't have one you know give us a reason why or maybe give us the uh, the bike you've chosen over the Vulcan S it's always nice to see what people go for the Honda Rebel is a pretty good one but you're 150 cc's down and this looks better personal opinion Ooh, leave the video on a spicy note there, eh? <laughs> but yeah, it's half an hour.